how on earth does a country that produces the best in science and engineering and the professions cannot produce men of caliber and character and integrity in Washington? You're all aware of the controversy raging across Canada about uh, municipalities permitting mosques to install loudspeaker on the minarets and give out a call to prayer which says, you know, Allah Akbar, God is the greatest and that there is no other God uh, but Allah. And wondering what sort of a climate produces such a mediocrity of leadership in that country. Today, six billion people are at the mercy of a dictatorship where there is no free press, where no one can report, where the doctor that discovered the disease disappeared, died. Joe Biden and his $50,000 a month son. He's made a horse and pony show out of his daily briefings. I watch it now as comedy. Don't they realize that God's on a leave of absence? This is the world at stake. Tariq Fatah. The fight for truth never ends, yet the writer makes his stand, but with a pen in his hand, till it be time to go. Such is the jihad of the brave that will call out from beyond his grave. Why chase a mirage? Why see the Jew as enemy? These are questions of the brave that will call out from beyond his grave. Behold the primacy of Allah. Disclose the hypocrisy of Mullah. Let the lies be exposed. Let the dictators be deposed. These are sins of the brave that will call out from beyond his grave. Uh, Tariq Fatah is our hero. I knew Tariq from Lahore, Pakistan, when he was news producer. And uh, I was relatively young. And uh, we were very touched by his courage, by his clear thoughts. And then I joined Tariq's struggle and journey here in Canada in 1999. Since then, I'm associated with Tariq. Tariq and I did first YouTube conversation back in 2011. And that got viral across India. And since then, Tariq and I have been doing so many talk shows on YouTube. And, uh, of course, my relation with Tariq is not just a friend's relation. It's a very spiritual, very intellectual as well. I don't feel Tariq is not anymore. Physically, he might not, but we are together. Long live Tariq, and we are here to carry on your legacy. I know Tariq for the last, I would say, more than 15 years, and um, uh, the first impression, as well as all the interactions which I have over the years, has been a person who has a zest for life, um, and more important, I was, you know, captivated by his enthusiasm, and uh, the important thing is uh, his deep uh, knowledge about the subcontinent history. Uh, so every interaction which I have over the years, though my interaction with them was on a professional level, um, b um, being uh, a banker of his, but uh, I also got to know him personally and uh, I was truly blessed uh, to get the opportunity uh, to meet him and uh, to interact with him all these years. We were big fans of Mr. Tarek Fateh and um, unfortunate that I never got to see him in That's person right. yes. but we used to follow his What the Fateh podcast. He on was Facebook. so impressive on his uh, uh, debates with some of these people who claim to know the religion. One of my favorites is I follow Allah's Islam not Mullah's Islam. Yes. 
and uh, i think if i remember correctly he was instrumental in changing the road in delhi new delhi which was aurangzeb road and he made the indian government think about it and then they changed it to um, uh, the President dr abdul, abdul kalam road and another thing i always remember he used to say i mean several things he used to say he was like a encyclopedia uh, he is like see indians you say in your anthem sin but there is no sin in in your so think about that all the time and you know i think in my heart he was a true indian absolutely he was such a gem he will be missed forever and i hope somebody takes up his legacy and a good foundation is set up where i would like to volunteer to help definitely in in, in whatever small capacity i can It's been a long time since I know Tariq Fatah. He is the reason of knowing a lot of history about subcontinent. He had been a genius of telling whatever he says. His work is his legacy which is going to live with us forever and ever. One thing which I cannot forget about him is how he very softly used to make very strong points with laughter. He was the kind of guy who will always live and be missed because of the kind of work he has done. We got together um, on a weekly basis just to talk things about politics and religion. Um, Terry did most of the talking, of course. You would be not surprising to learn that. But it was such a pleasure to listen to another point of view. Um, one of the things that I valued most about our, our meetings was that I would come with a question or a subject or something from the news or something I'd heard or maybe read on on his Twitter uh, account. And it caused me a reason to think about things in a different way. And what I valued most about the conversations that we've had um, was how enlightened he was on world affairs, world matters, uh, religion, politics, things that most people would want to stay away from in conversation. But Tarek was so um, interesting because he had a different perspective and it was an honest perspective and you knew that he was going to take no prisoners when it came to talking the truth. And so it was a, it was a real pleasure and a real delight to be able to listen to someone who spoke from the heart with a lot of brains and a lot of intelligence and it was just a joy to be in his company. So I value that short period that we had together, about a year, um, but it was such a, a pleasure to be in, in his company and to listen to what he had to say. I remember Tarek so fondly. I think one of the fondest memories was about three years or four. It was before COVID, I know that for sure. And we both went down to Washington, D.C., and Tarek had a campaign which was about Balakistan independence, and we had a jumbotron-equipped um, truck drive around uh, D.C. Uh, speaking about um, Balakistan. Um, a lot of people didn't know what we were talking about, but that didn't matter because it was the principle. And that was what it's always about with Tarek, isn't it? It's the principle. Uh, he never bent the knee to censorship. He was never politically correct. And as I've always said, if there's one thing worse than censorship, it is self-censorship. We see that happening so much today. And Tarek Patel was the complete opposite. 
He was the high wire walker without the safety net. Um, as the saying goes that I subscribe to when it comes to editors, journalists, writers, the very best ones are risk takers. And Tarek Fatah was never afraid to take a, ri a risk. He was never one to bend the knee. We need more Tarek Fatahs. And I say that even though we disagreed on so many things, but that's beside the point. I met, as you remember, on the Michael Corrin show. I always thought you were hilarious. Then you came to work with us on the morning show, News Talk 1010. And you and I would clash on occasion, but it was always amicable. I think one of the things that I remember on your passing, because somebody was telling a story about how you got into an argument with the program director, and you guys would just shout at each other like there was no tomorrow, and then he would say, we're done, and you'd go, okay. Uh, the word that came to mind in paying tribute to you was Elfin. Uh, there was a mischief about you, a sense of humor, uh, an endless amount of curiosity, and I will treasure that for him. And I met Tarek through his wife Nargis. I worked alongside her for many years at Queen and Spadina at the Medical Center. I have a number of different interactions with Tarek over the years, and I always appreciated that he never compromised on his beliefs and he was he was eager to take on a fight where he saw that it would make good for others and uh, to get out the word that he thought was very important to spread so you'll be missed but never forgotten I miss you my friend, you were the fire, in the friendly fire, every single time we opened microphones, we had arguments, we had debates, we were civilized, we found nuance, we found agreement sometimes, <laughs> and other times we just laughed, and I'll miss our conversations both on the air and more importantly the ones we had off the air. You were the, one of the bravest souls I know in this world, you spoke your truth, and I love you, and I'll always miss you, you'll always be in my heart. Goodbye my friend. Um, I didn't meet your father, but I feel I know him um, through you. Uh, you've obviously got a lot of the same attributes, curiosity, intellectual, smart, um, and a lot of love. So uh, thank you for allowing me to be here today and sharing this time with you. I'm going to be talking about my favorite memories of that. So one of them was on our way to a friend's cottage. We had a great time. We were laughing with joy. And we had some food there. And it was a great time. And another time was we went out multiple times together. And we went out for dinner. Always after um, coming to his house, this is saying hello and the email. And the last memory was going out for dinner, just before his passing. And yeah.
chat with mom? I've been wanting to. I got so excited. No way. I uh, have known Tariq for over 50 years. We first met in Pakistan when he was a producer at uh, Pakistan Television. And Nergis was working in Lintas as a copywriter. I was also in the advertising industry. After that, we moved to Jeddah in 1980, and Nergis and Tariq had already moved there. We spent almost 30 years together in Saudi Arabia, after which they moved to Canada and we followed soon after. And so we have had a long and a very fruitful friendship and relationship that has gone uh, over decades. It is um, very saddening to hear, to, to, to know that Tariq has left us and gone, but we know he's in a better place. We know that the work he has done will continue and, will, uh, not give, and we will not give up the struggle for him. So Tariq, rest in peace, knowing that your work will continue, and um, and hopefully we'll we'll see we'll find fruit in the future. I've known Tariq since the 90s. We were colleagues, and he was a firebrand even then. It was such a pleasure to work with him and you couldn't shut him up if he believed in something. He would put his life on the line for you and I was sorely, sorely missing. You know, my mom and I were just chatting about what an interesting uh, political spectrum Tariq had. When I first had an opportunity to meet him through my mom, I remember lots of lively debates because at that point uh, Tariq's license plate I think read CCP NDP. We were joking around about that. And to just watch the way he always stayed core and true to his values regardless of where they landed on the political spectrum was just fascinating. If you asked me 20 years ago if I thought Tarek would be a key contributor to the Toronto Sun, I, I would have said absolutely no way. But I think just the fact that he didn't let um, social caricatures guide his morality uh, was a lesson to everybody that, that he surrounded himself with. And so he's somebody that's going to be truly missed. I think um, the world and our community lost someone who is a moral compass and was not afraid to speak his thoughts about the things that mattered to him and his community. So Tarek, we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss the lively conversations. and We're glad we can be here today to celebrate your life with your friends and family. I had an opportunity to meet uh, Tarek Ji in Delhi uh, in a couple of events uh, and, uh, and the first thing he asked what are you doing in Delhi, you should be back in Toronto or Ottawa, so that's what he told me. I always remember with a good smile, uh, uh, the way he talked, everything, it was just amazing. Uh, and one connection is, my da I also lost my dad with uh, in cancer. Uh, and, uh, I remember his last days as Natasha was explaining everything. Uh, yeah, and uh, his reach uh, due to social media was in a different level. Uh, uh, and just loved him as an Indian. I used to call him always an Indian, a great Indian. Uh, and he was a true Indian, a great soul. I know Tarek as um, my best friend's father. He was an inspiration to all of us as we grew up and went to school. And his, his political, you know, zest for life got us all interested in thinking about those kind of things. And he was a kind and loving man. And he introduced us to Bob Ray as our first outing. Um, and it is it was just so sad that this has happened. But, but this does happen in his part of life. And I just, he raised a wonderful family and he taught us all life long lessons.
was associated with the Tari for a long time. I used to have a printing press and we used to do a lot of work for freedom of the press and that's how I met him and since then we have been good friends. I'm the editor emeritus of the Toronto Sun and I was one of uh, Tarek's um, editors at the Sun. Uh, he wrote for us for more than a decade and I'd like his family and his friends and everyone who knows him to know that he was the bravest journalist I've ever known. The things he wrote and the courage that he showed in, in fighting for freedom everywhere, not just as a journalist, but as an activist, is one of the most impressive things I've ever known. And I'm not going to forget it. And I know a lot of people are never going to forget it. It was a great honor to call Tarek my friend and really a personal hero of mine. He loved everybody. His, his enthusiasm for life was so infectious. And, and one of, I mean, there's so, so many things I'm going to remember about such a great man as Tarek. But one of the things I'll never forget is that whenever I'd meet up with him, he'd talk about how he was just speaking with the cab driver he was with or speaking with the local shopkeeper. Everywhere he went, he would just make a human connection with, with whoever he met. And he was just, just someone who, who went and, and connected with everybody. And that, that enthusiasm for life and, and his, his belief in, like, in everybody's voice mattering and every person mattering, it was, it was so powerful, so infectious. A, a true hero who, who was and, and is loved by so many. I've known Tarek for years and years and years, well over a decade. An incredible human being, unbelievable person who's added so much to this country, added so much to my life personally by coming here. And I have to say one of the most inspiring things was when Tarek was in the hospital, the parade of people that came to see him, the incredible diverse group of people that came to pay tribute. And, and of course, he was always an incredible host, lighting up the room and holding court. But it was the most unbelievable, diverse, interesting group of people. He was an amazing, incredible man, and I'll, I'll miss him a lot. And I came to know about her father, Tarek Mustafa, uh, through Natasha. I mean, she speaks with such genuine love and affection and admiration for her father. I mean, she always shared his knowledge, his great wisdom, and I see it through his daughter. I mean, Natasha just, you know, the way she goes about her work, all of these things, I can see that she gets this from her father. His articles that I've seen in the media, you know, is I haven't met him personally, but I feel like I have come to know him through his right. wonderful daughter oh, Natasha, yeah. and I just right, really nice want to, 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 to share nice my to condolences to both her care. and the rest of her family. He was a great man, and her dad touched so many lives. Maybe the, the thing that I would say I treasure the most is um, that I was able to visit him a couple of weeks, maybe four or five weeks before he passed away and it was a really great visit in the sense that he was in, in good health and his, better, his usual personality, his usual self. Um, so it was a really nice uh, way to say goodbye to him and to you know, this last memory of him. And um, of course, uh, I've known Tarek uh, all my life, um, being him being my papa. Maybe the, mo the memory that I have the most, the earliest memories I would have are um, when uh, Natasha and, and Nazia and, and Papi and Papa lived in, in Saudi Arabia and we went to visit them. And I just remember just. Um, I think at that time they had somehow found like a Michael Jackson music video of like like I'm bad or the one where he's like dressed as a zombie and I remember it was a big event to get access to that video and then we all watched it together as a family and it was maybe just a reflection of how much of um, uh, you know always looking for what's new and what's happening uh, like the kind of person he was so uh, that's yeah that's a memory I would share about. I have known him for 40 years, and in my view, as far as I feel, we were the best of buddies. We had a lot of acquaintances, a lot of friends, 
but Tarat and I had a very special relationship where we trusted each other. Oh, he wants to, he wants to go there. Each other's advice. <laughs> no, he's saying, he's saying that. You're losing him now. I a, can't even say it how, how devastated I am to lose him. It's like I have lost. Yeah, as long as they are. In between, we will be remembered. It's got given us a lot of reason to laugh, and we're laughing at some of it. Yeah, I mean, so many of my childhood memories are with him in this house. We also used to live in Pickering Ajax together. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really a testament to him how many people are here today um, to celebrate his amazing life and legacy. Um, yeah, I just, I think, too, something that's come up recently is, like, you know, his, uh, the activist roots are definitely, like, embedded in me and what I do, although in a different way. It's, like, something we grew up around, so um, I'll keep that with me always. And also, he was an avid documenter. I knew Tarek over all that time, admired him, um, certainly over all that time because he was interested in the same issues um, that, that animated me and he's always been a leader. I mean, I, I think he's one of these rare people who truly had an audience that counted on him to give the best view. You know, no one has the final word, but to give the most authoritative view on a lot of issues, whether it was the politics of South Asia, or cultural issues, or the politics of Canada, North America, the world. And so our paths crossed uh, on many occasions, but two uh, episodes that I remember very well were one, um, as Minister of Citizenship and Immigration in Ottawa, uh, I had a call from him uh, saying that there was this case of a group of refugees in Pakistan whose lives are in danger. And of course, a Canadian Minister of Immigration is dealing with these issues all the time. At, at that time, we were thinking a lot about Syria because the war there was getting worse. Uh, but given my experience in Afghanistan, I knew how bad things were uh, in Pakistan, particularly for m minority groups, particularly for those who were activists, in this case, on the Baluch side. And so we brought uh, this group to Canada. And uh, I have to give... Uh, the utmost tribute to Tarek for his leadership, also to the staff of, um, of our uh, missions abroad, because more than one was involved, but especially our High Commission in Islamabad, uh, and our really professional immigration and refugee uh, officials around the world. They made this happen, uh, and they did it discreetly. They knew these lives were truly in danger. I mean, this is a group of student activists uh, on behalf of the Baluchkas in Pakistan whose leaders have been decimated whose leaders have disappeared, whose leaders have been killed, and these uh, persecuted people that Tarek w wanted to bring to Canada would have been next in line. So they came to Canada. Um, sadly, the leader of that group was Karim Baluch. And we who live in Toronto know the terrible story of her uh, death, which uh, for me amounts to nothing less than an unsolved murder, uh, and almost certainly an extrajudicial killing by those uh, in positions of authority in Pakistan who would have been her assailants had she stayed there, their arm reached here. Uh, and so the battle that Tarek has fought, fought all his life for the protection of minority rights, for the recognition of um, indigenous cultures like the Baluch for political rights, uh, for free speech. That battle is still being fought and all of us here today, all of us who love Tarek, um, uh, will continue his, uh, on, on following his great example, will continue that fight. The second example uh, that I can give you comes after politics. And we all know uh, in democracies like ours how things end for the losing side. Uh, the numbers come in, you are no longer the people's choice. You are in your campaign office. Um, the party is being held somewhere else. Uh, your volunteers, your supporters are discouraged. 
uh, it's a hard time, uh, and and especially the way we lost in 2015 was a painful moment, not just for me, but for many, many people. Uh, and Tarek was one of those people who, having never been, I don't think, to my political office or campaign office, came on the day we had lost, uh, and uh, conveyed his regards. Um, uh, underlined that his belief that we had been on the righteous side, that we had taken the right positions uh, in the fight that had then just ended, uh, and commiserated with us in that a lot of what we've been saying had been misconstrued, taken out of context, spun in dangerous directions. Uh, and of course he had his ideas about who was responsible for that. Um, I shared many of those ideas. But what was most important was the friendship, the solidarity, uh, and the celebration of democratic process that he uh, that he represented, that he was prepared to invest in as a as an activist, as a public intellectual, as a as a great human being. Not everyone has that gift to understand uh, uh, when people are in pain and to try and turn it into something else. Um, he did that. We're all in pain now, having lost him. Uh, but we'll try and turn it into something else, something of which he would be proud of. One thing I really loved about him was he always spoke his mind. So that's why we were good friends and that's what I loved about him. He just said it. Whatever he felt, he said it. तकरीबन चरणने पचाने की मर्यादा सी आ जब तो बाप रहे तो गवर्नमेंट से ही होता तो बड़े काट बंदे ने जिन्हें मैं मर्यादा तो जिधे इन जिन्हें तो पैशन सोशल जस्टिस तो डेमोक्रेसी तो सेक्युलरिज्म ने इन्हें ज्यादा डीप हो गए जिन्हें तारक दस तो तारक ने मिलना उधर कारण इमेल लगता सी जो भी तुसी किसी लाइब्रेरी जा के वो चारों पर फेक तब बैंक तब बैंक खिलाड़ियाँ हो रही हैं तो बीच तारक ने बैठे डिस्कशन हो रही है कंटेनरवादी हो रही है इंडोनेशिया की हिस्ट्री वाले इराक की हिस्ट्री वाले इंडो पाकिस्तान वाले तो जदों तारक ने अपनी किताब लिखी मिराज वाली तो उधर बीच थोड़ा जय सिखा वाले सी तो मैं उधर ना उधर थोड़ा जय कम भी की था तो वो तारक वर्ग के जेड़े बंदे ने बड़े रेयर ने खास करके आज जेड़े दौर चे जेड़े अपनी पूरी जिंदगी किसे आदर्श ले किसे आइडियल ले लगा दी थी तो मैंने खुशी है मैंने माना है कि मैं अपनी जिंदगी दे बच्चे तारक वर्ग के बंदे ने मिल सकिया तो वो तो तो जी मेरी इंस्पिरेशन है सानू जेह बंद I've got too many stories to tell, but I'll try to tell a couple. Uh, you know, every time anything came up to do with religion, as a columnist, I always called Tarek, and um, he always helped me. It didn't matter what the issue was, whether it was really, really dark or whether it was something political, whatever it was. He always knew the right thing to do, the tack to take. Once in a while he called me too, but mostly it was a one, you know the other way, where he was giving advice on how to approach it. I remember the situation with the terrible massacre on the Danforth, and he'd had some sort of a surgery, and he still came down and walked that whole corridor with me, with his cane, even though he could barely walk, because he wanted to see exactly every aspect of it, so that he understood himself, not just from the media, of what it looked like. And when we were at the end of it, we ran into a lady that had a business, and it would put her basically out of business because the crime scene was right in front of her place. And so for weeks and weeks she lost all her, her business, her customers. And Tarek 
offered her a thousand dollars just like that and I never seen anybody with such generosity and I said to him later you have a thousand dollars just to give some stranger you've never met and he said it's bigger than that it's nothing to do with the money or the bank account or whatever it's a spiritual thing when I saw him in the hospital and it's the last time I saw him that's the last thing he said to me all of this is a spiritual thing and so you know even though this man in a humanity way had such a great impact on so many people he was spiritual last story I wrote a column about him being sick in the hospital and still fighting and I went to a corner store where I often buy the paper and different things lottery tickets and you know, for years I've been going there and you know the guy that I buy it from he says hello and that's it this time I go up to buy the paper and he looks at me and he says you know Tariq Fatah I go yeah he says oh, I read you he says oh my god oh my god tell him you know uh, he, he just said you gotta tell him that, that I love him I love his opinion and you know it was just such a, a great thrill for me to you know to be able to reach across that that guy had no idea what I did for a living but because of Tariq he now did and that's the kind of respect that he brings to the table all over the world It's always better to celebrate the life than the loss and Tarek was a man who, who had an impact, who had a family, who continues to, to make a mark in the world and those who often have the greatest impact, it, you know, they, 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 they shake the room up, they, uh, they cause some controversy because they get people to, to really, uh, pardon me, forces them to think, force people to think about the world they're in and the assumptions they make and hopefully uh, that has helped uh, many people uh, be more open to change, positive change in the world and Tarek and, uh, has certainly uh, lived a life uh, remarkable life worth celebrating so I'm, I'm glad people here have a chance to yes mourn his loss but also celebrate his life and the, uh, and the contributions he and, and his family have made. Just been very blessed and honored to be here to meet the family member of Mr. Fateh and it is, I would like to give my special thanks to my son because he is uh, working with the daughter and I love Mr. Tariq Fateh because he's a true Indian he had he was very much convincing when he was talking about any agendas or any other issues without any fear and he had uh, his uh, his speech was uh, very very attractive for I think all Indians because he being a Pakistani and living in Canada was speaking all, always about in favor of India which, which made I think uh, very popular also in India I'm sure as he's watching his videos back home and I'm the one of the fan of uh, Mr. Tariq Fateh and I'm honored to be here. Uh, I met Tariq about 25 years ago or maybe even longer when he corralled all of us Muslims who think as Muslims should into forming the Muslim Canadian Congress uh, and we work together to stop Sharia law coming into Ontario. Uh, Tarek is a was a fearless leader. He uh, motivated all of us and all of us fought with him as well. So he was a personality that is very difficult to replace. Uh, I hope and pray his legacy lives on and is a guiding force for youngsters who want to make a difference. I came to Canada 35 years ago and among the first few people we met was Tariq Fatah. And with Tariq Fatah, we uh, put together the Muslim Canadian Congress, the first ever organization of uh, Muslim activists to speak out against terrorism, extremism, 
everything that Tariq stood for. And over the years, I got to know Tariq very well. I used to tell him he's like the brother I left behind because we were always fighting and arguing. But despite all of that, Tariq was a man to respect. And he was unique. They don't make them like him anymore. He always spoke the truth. And that truth hurt many people. But it came from his heart. It came from his gut. And there was so much that I have learned along this journey from the amazing, uh, amazing Tariq Fatah. Uh, you know, about uh, knowledge, about learning, about history, about facts, about speaking the truth. And I think he has left behind a legacy that will last us a long time. Although a man like him can never be replaced, there can never be another Tariq Fatah. We immediately struck up a great friendship and it was a very uh, very special for me to be able to maintain that we didn't always agree and he didn't always like what I did and, but he always uh, was very candid and very honest and uh, I think he's 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 one of the most principled people that I know 100%. and uh, and he enjoyed the battle he enjoyed the fight, <laughs> the, good, the good fight. And he loved you. Uh, we, we had a very, very wonderful relationship, and I was so pleased that I was able to talk to him before he passed. When we were in hospital these past two, three months, Bob called one day, and you called him the perfect day because all of his cousins were there. So he got to show off to his cousins, right? <laughs> and the wives and all the nieces and nephews that... Um, Bob, Ambassador Bob Ray's called. I'll just take this very casual call. <laughs> and then Bob said the most beautiful, touching, wonderful things, the things you want to hear at the end end of your days. And one thing you said that I'm going to steal, Bob, one of many things you've said, you said, I'm sorry that this time has come, but it's a time that comes for all of us. And it's a time that came too soon for my dad, but I'm glad you got there in time yes. to speak to him. So thank I'm you. I'm glad too. I'm glad too. And it did come too soon for him, but yeah. we... We have to learn how to embrace uh, the passing of time. Yeah. It happens. Uh -huh. Rest in peace, dear Tari. The battle for Fatah of truth will continue. What a privilege to know a man so brave, whose work will shine from beyond his grave.